I'm Lindsay Romano with Newhoff Media. One in four Americans are dealing with some sort of mental health issue, depression, anxiety, self-harm, substance abuse disorder. And the reality is that not enough people seek care or treatment. And much of that is due to stigma, but it also has to do with resources. But a federal hotline can bridge people to those services. And with me today is Grace Ho, who is the Illinois Secretary of Human Services. She's here to answer some questions about the rollout of the 988 Crisis Helpline. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks for having me and, and um, being open to talk about this very important issue. Now, I know this, this helpline is actually not new. That's right. Um, I think previously, since, nine, since 2005, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, which we call the Lifeline, was launched, and folks have been able to access um, trained clinicians through a 1-800 number, which was 1-800-273-TALK. And so, as you reported, um, beginning on July 16th, which is just this Saturday, um, folks will be able to access a three-digit number, 988, to reach those trained clinicians just as they had before. In Illinois, um, we've been preparing for this transition and really ensuring that we had trained clinicians from Illinois responding to those calls. Now, I do want to clarify that the talk or the, um, the lifeline is still active. People can still call that 1-800 number. Uh, but this gives people a little better access just to use that really easy to remember number 988. But I also understand there's a text option. Correct. I think that the text option is going to be rolled out over the next several months. The first kind of phase of this new um, chapter of the call center is 988 and soon to be followed with other um, functionality. When can I call? Is there an hour? Are there hours attached to this? Yeah, that's a good question. So the Lifeline responds to calls 24 7. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just as it has um, since 2005. Um, and so folks who are experiencing suicidal or mental health issues or even substance use crises, as you had mentioned can call 988 and get connected to those in need with trained counselors. And again, beginning on Saturday, July 16th, they can dial 988. What happens if I'm in a crisis? Will they direct me to people? Um, what happens in that situation? Yeah, you know, I think what's interesting as we look at um, the data over the past many years um, for the call center, 80% of the folks who have called the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline have had their issues addressed right away. So 80% of those who have called had their issues addressed through you know, um, talking with and working with the trained crisis counselors. For those 20% who needed additional services, they were referred or transferred to other um, resources um, such as kind of emergency management. So what we want to make sure folks understand is that if you are in imminent danger, obviously 911 should be the number that, that people should continue to call. But if you're experiencing suicidal thoughts or a mental health crisis or a substance use crisis without kind of imminent danger, we recommend that folks call 988 to really get connected to the therapists and the trained counselors that could really help you at that time. A lot of times in dealing with mental health issues, family members are often the ones that see these things and are really urging someone to get help. If it's not me that's in crisis, but maybe someone I love or a family member that is either maybe in self-harm or is has substance abuse disorder or is showing signs of suicidal ideation or something's just not right. Can I call? You know what, Lindsay, that is such a good question. And I actually asked that very question myself because we know that family and friends are often the ones who are able to see it first or are able to actually help their loved one access services. And the answer is yes. If you have a loved one or a friend um, or a family member 
who you um, believe can benefit from accessing um, you know, trained crisis counselors, or if you need um, guidance as to the best way to be there for your loved one, yes, people should call 988. Oftentimes when someone is dealing with depression and not quite to the point of suicidal ideation, one of the things they think is, I'm not that important. And it's really hard for them to seek care, treatment, or even to call someone. Is there a certain level where there's somebody just feeling blue, but maybe isn't feeling like they want to end their life? Can they call? Well, so I would say, Lindsay, that um, I think you bring up a really important uh, point, which is the stigma that is attached to mental health um, and substance use disorders. And I see the the um, initiation of 988 as one of the ways to change the narrative around behavioral health crises, right? The fact that we are prioritizing it and making it easier for people to access care, I think that, I hope that sends a signal to people who um, are experiencing crises and want someone to talk to. And that is what 988 is for. Um, I think the other issue that you're talking about in terms of kind of people not feeling that their issues may not elevate to this. I, I think that you know it's important for people to feel like they have access to someone to talk to, regardless of the, the um, level of their own feelings as uh, of, um, I guess, severity. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, we hope that 988 saves lives. We hope that 988 serves as a way to prevent people from further deteriorating in their crisis. Um, and I think one of the other pieces that I want to kind of elevate is that there are ways to protect the privacy of the people who are calling, right? So any effort to obtain any demographic information from those who use 988 will only be used to further improve the system, right? To help understand what communities need. And then the other, pe the other piece of gathering any sort of data is only to connect people to ongoing supports. And that was one of my next questions. In a day and age, often people are worried about their privacy. And in these kind of situations, things can be very sensitive. So that was one of my next questions, this service being you know, anonymous or as much can be for that person, but I understand, you know, sometimes you have to collect that data in order to know if you're helping people. I only have a couple other questions. One is, this is a free service, correct? Yes. Yes. Completely free. Anytime anybody needs it, they can just call 998. And then eventually, as you mentioned, getting to text that number as well. One other thing in the here in the rollout in Illinois, do we have enough staff in order to handle this? We know that mental health is a crisis right now. And one of the things is just lack of resources. Are we going to have enough people to staff this helpline in Illinois? Yes. And Lindsay, you know, I wanted to correct for something that I said earlier that the chat function is going to be ready on July 16th on Saturday. So oh, that's wonderful. Um, chatting and texting and calling will be available um, uh, on Saturday. And so I think the other question that you asked regarding, are we going to be able to be ready to um, respond to the folks who are calling? And, and we hope that there will be an increased number of calls, not because we want more people to be experiencing mental health crises or behavioral health crises, but we believe that people um, are in need of this service who have not accessed it thus far. So we do project that there will be increased calls, chats, and texts to 988 over the, the next um, five years. And so in Illinois, um, under the leadership of our governor and um, the leaders at the, the Department of Human Services, we have been planning and building the infrastructure for this rollout of 988 and subsequent increases to, um, to, of participants over the past um, couple years. And so one of the things that we are really, really proud of is that we are building up capacity in Illinois where we will have in-state trained clinicians to answer calls from people from Illinois. And so I think some people may not have realized that um, 
uh, going back since 2005, Illinois did not have that type of infrastructure. And so approximately only 20% of Illinois residents um, had access to in-state call, in, in call takers. So we are, we are catapulting over that number and we were gonna have an in-state call answer rate of over 85%, which is something we're really excited about. We have done this through the building of capacity um, through additional regional lifeline centers. Um, previously, we only had a handful of counties that were covered and starting on July 16th, on Saturday, when people call 988 from Illinois, they will be talking to someone from Illinois. And I think it's really important to note that whenever the state and the governor, as you mentioned, are investing in things like mental health, it's telling those people, we do care, we want you to seek help and not to stay quiet. So th I wanna thank you again for taking some time to answer some questions. And just again, remind everybody, if you can, that if they need help, all it takes is just to dial three easy numbers.